Renault Nissan, obviously we are a very unique combination. We are a very unique combination because we do not look like any other car manufacturer. Usually you have a German car manufacturer, you have a Japanese car manufacturer, you have a Chinese car manufacturer. We are a little bit a hybrid of different cultures because we are made of two, one French, one Japanese car manufacturer, one Russian with Avtovaz, which is the third leg of the alliance, and we have autonomous company, that means decision in Japan, uh, for, to, for Nissan are not taken in Paris, and decision for Avtovaz are not taken in Tokyo. That means every company is autonomous, but we develop synergies together with specific teams in charge of the companies, and it has been going like this for the last 10 years. So we are a unique combination of different culture, and it works. It's complicated. Uh, it's against the common sense of merge the companies, put them together, etc., etc. But it works. So I won't come back to it. We have been doing well for the last 10 years. We have developed a lot of, a lot of synergies. We didn't have any book to follow. We have done something absolutely innovative and very specific. And against the odd, it works and continue to work. And we will be adding more and more companies. And I'm going to explain to you why. The car industry has had the privilege to be one of the worst hit industry through the financial crisis, the banks and the car industry. So the banks, everybody understand. But the car industry, why? Because we are a big consumer of cash. We are big employers. We invest a lot of money. We uh, have a big supply chain, importing parts, exporting cars. So cash is our uh, you know, lifeblood. When cash is a problem, becomes to be a problem, and that's what happened in October 2008, when all of a sudden the banks stopped lending money, we were in trouble. And a lot of governments were very worried, because not because they cared about the car industry. In fact, there are a lot of other industries they didn't care so much about and had a lot of trouble, but because we are big employers. And because we are big employers, no government said, I'm going to allow my car industry or one of my car makers to go bankrupt. Because we're talking not only about the number of jobs in the car maker, but uh, you usually consider that there are at least seven or eight times the number of jobs generated into the supplier network or into the dealer network. So for example, when General Motors has 300,000 employees, it is uh, normal to consider that about 2.4 million people work for General Motors, inside General Motors, or as a supplier working for General Motors, or as a distributor working for General Motors. So no government would accept to say, I'm going to take a risk with 2.4 million jobs, you know, most of them being in my home country, just because you know, there is a crisis which is beyond the industry, which is hitting the industry. That's one of the reasons for which there have been a lot of intervention in the United States, in France, in Germany, in Japan, directly or indirectly, to support car makers, to make sure that they're not going to be victim of the, financial, of the financial crisis. Now, the financial crisis is behind us at 90%, I would say. Cash is back. Spreads are going down. But there is still a recession. We are still struggling with the recession. I mean, this recession, there are a lot of speculation about when we're going to get out of the recession. But the recession translates into the following numbers. 68 million cars sold and produced in 2007, 62 million in uh, 2008, probably 59 million in 2009, and we're going to probably continue next year with the same level, which means 59 to 60 million. And all these numbers down, even though there have been a lot of intervention from different governments to stimulate demand, scrapping systems in Europe, cash for clunkers in the United States, the Russian, the Brazilian, everybody supported the industry in order to call customers back to buy cars, to buy cars. So that's what the industry is facing on the short term. So what are our challenges as car makers? We have a double challenge. The first challenge is go through the crisis, obviously. If you don't go through the crisis, there is no future. As you know, two car makers collapsed in the United States. They went Chapter 11, General Motors and Chrysler. Uh, probably more victims 
would have appeared without some kind of support from, from, from governments, uh, both in Europe and in, in Japan. And frankly, the story is not finished. And managing through the crisis, the very simple item is make sure that you have a positive free cash flow, no matter what happens. Positive free cash flow. Why? Because when you have a situation where the banks are not lending, financial system is shaking, you don't want to be in a situation where you need to raise more money. Just make sure that your free cash flow is positive through the crisis. That's short term, but you know very well that even you manage very well through a short term crisis, you may end up uh, disappearing at the end because if you have no reason for which your people fight the short term crisis, if, you have, if they have the impression there is no more a long-term vision, there is no reason to be for the future, uh, well, in a certain way, you're going to lose the steam, you're going to lose the motivation, and you end up maybe doing the right things on the short term by being very weak on the long term. And in the case of the Renault Nissan, the long term, you know, on top of everything we've done into cutting investment and cutting costs and reducing inventory, and making sure that account receivable, account payable were under control, fighting for market share in all the markets where we are there. I mean, all the things that you're doing on the short term to make sure you're shoring up your business, what we have been doing is lining up all the direction for the long term. Some of them you know, some of them I'm going to tell you, and I would say there were four main directions. The first one is making sure you are well positioned in the emerging markets because we know very well that after the crisis, growth will come from emerging market, particularly for the car industry. Uh, second, that uh, because of the development of the emerging market, you need to develop enough cars and enough choice into the segment where you have smaller car and where you have cars which are very affordable for the consumer. Because if you want to sell a lot of cars in China and India and the Middle East and South America, you, you have to make sure that you have enough small car and cheap car and affordable car for the consumer to choose. And third element is, well, obviously, we have to go for different kind of cars than the one we have been selling in the past. We're obviously advocating and pushing the zero emission car. We're going to talk about them, about electric car being the first wave of the zero emission car. But after this, you're going to have other waves of zero emission cars like the fuel cells car, that means the car where you put hydrogen and you get water out of, uh, out, uh, out of it. This is something which is the object of a lot of debate in the industry, not only at the industry because it's a competitive debate, but also at the level of government and at the level of infrastructure. This is something which you're going to be going to see and participate and going to be shaping this industry for the next five years. And the last point is making sure that the concept of the alliance, where you have different car manufacturers, different identities, can work together, share platform, share technology, share engine, share transmission, share modules, share suppliers, without having to merge, without having to disappear into something where their identity will not be, will not be there. So these are the kind of challenges we are, we, we are facing. And again, the most difficult thing into a situation like this is to make sure that you have enough focus to overcome the short-term crisis. And, but at the same time, you take the time to explain why you have to overcome the crisis. What is the role coming after? What is the vision to, for after the crisis? If you are too much in the future and people are worried about the short-term, you're not credible. But if you are only on the short-term, but people say, OK, why should I do all of this? Why should I go through all this hustle? And I don't understand what the vision behind. Well, you're going to be losing motivation.